furrier's mate. Hey! Well done. What's your name again? The Gentleman Jin. At your service. Hmm. And we're married to that name, are we? <laughs> What's wrong with my name? Hello and welcome to another Let's Play. My name is Saiken and today we're diving into Lamplighter's League and uh, this is going to be the full playthrough. I've done a mini Let's Play so it's not an entire blind playthrough but I know very little about uh, the game and its mechanics uh, deeper than let's say two missions in. So what we're really going to do is we're going to explore the game together. I invite you to tag along and take a look at this beautiful paradox game. So the first mission is really just to get to know the principles. But that's my professional name. You can just call me Lucky. So how long have you been working for Ed? As long as you have, I think. So about three hours. Got it. So a couple of things around that game. For starters, uh, mm, you do have two different phases. Phase number one uh, is the setup or preparation phase. Um, that is what we're currently in. It's kind of a free form uh, RPG uh, type of environment where as long as you're not in combat you are just going through a couple of the puzzles. Each of uh, the uh, different uh, operators has their individual role. Ingrid, for instance, is the strong one, uh, whilst Latif is the sneaky, sneaky guy. Uh, this um, is particularly important, as you don't want to always just bruise your way through everything, but you want to basically set up um, in the right fashion. And in the right fashion sometimes means you got to be a little bit more stealthy. Who are they? No idea. But ten francs as one of them has her package. <laughs> Good. We're separating the group and letting Latif handle it. And unfortunately he turned around just as we were about to handle it. That is really unfortunate. Well, Sometimes I amaze even myself. Any sign of the package? These guys are flunky. Well, that was not how it's done. Quite the opposite. You want to be a little bit more sneaky than that. Ingrid moves over there. Good. These two unfortunately can't be flanked, but Ingrid could help us uh, with her out of combat ability, uh, which would allow us to nicely move in and teach them a lesson. Good. We're carefully advancing. Another flunky. Perhaps we can slip past them. No, there is no slipping past them. Not on my watch. Good. Let's regroup. Fantastic. 
It's not necessary to kill all of them or um, disable all of them, but I felt like it would be a fun, a fun little extra. Now we don't have any knockdown anymore. Which means we're going into actual combat. Ingrid moves in. And her uh, first ability, uh, besides moving, is to actually strike. Uh, basic me melee attack with a special effect of uh, days. Debuff, the unit has a minus one AP for the next round. Every single unit has two AP. That includes our agents and theirs. And it is now our turn to teach them a lesson. So. I regret that it came to this. Striking them. At the same time. Oh, come on. I played too much War Tales. Shouldn't have clicked the one. But it's okay. Uh, I wanted to show you the ultimate. Um, every single character also has an ultimate. Latif here um, has a... A decoy that he can most frequently use and uh, needless to say that we've now used a said decoy Good. Well, we're right back in combat. Enemies are alerted. But the good news is we can move in and use evasion. Another ability that uh, Ingrid has where uh, she gets a self buff uh, to no evade, uh, meaning the first attack against her will miss. So it's an enemy phase and nothing happens. Move up, hit the guy and afterwards hit evade so that we're not taking any damage. Latif moves up. Whenever he moves up, he automatically gets dodge, which is evasion as well. So we really want him to move, shoot, move, shoot, just so that everybody always has evasion. Moves over, and that is hopefully going to finish him. Good, we're out of um, special abilities, so from here on it is pure fighting. Ah, they're loading the trucks to go. Then we need to move fast if we want our payday. Wait, wait. Good, we unfortunately don't have any other option than to fully engage here. There's a little bit of lore, but that's all there is. A four against two. We don't uh, want to fight fair. We're wanting to let them come around and then we're going to ambush them. Of course, if we had the bruiser ability, that would uh, be a huge benefit, but we can't lament what we don't have. And so it begins. 
Enemies are scattering. And I really don't want to stand in the open because these guys will shoot us. But I think this is far enough away so that the ones in the back will not be able to hit us. Uh, we're going to put evasion on. Moving up. Decent hit, uh, decent hit chance. Uh, so we're focusing one of them down. Trying to uh, deny them uh, the numbers advantage. There's the first bit of damage that we're taking. Uh, we would have needed special abilities in order to not take damage. Player face. Alright. What we want to do is we want to get up and close. So... One of Ingrid's nice abilities is if she kills someone, she gets Killer Instinct. That's her passive ability, allowing her to basically, uh, yeah, move in and uh, and chain kill enemies if she can pull it off. Good. The other uh, nice ability is her ultimate. Gave me. That uh, will uh, knock everybody down. Her ultimate onslaught uh, is a crowd control and damage dealing tool. And on top of that, Take we're this. going to evade uh, just so that the third uh, person will not have an easy time catching us. We're getting evasion on Latif as well. And Did you see that? we're taking out a couple of enemies. So far, things are going very much according to plan. We do have evasion, so it's not a problem to be in the open. Your luck never fails to impress me. That will trigger Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct can trigger up to two times per round. And Ingrid is very much up in your face, giving ourselves an evasion buff. Very nice. Evasion, by the way, only works once a turn, uh, so you really can't uh, do it too often. And there we go. We took a little bit of damage. Uh, you can see just how important it is to plan according Ali with your resources. If we would have had enough uh, preparation, then uh, we would have potentially not taken any damage whatsoever. Uh, real quick, double check. Is there any secret? Uh, because that, my dear friends, is a real thing as well. Lots of secrets are hidden in that game. And typically they allow you to get a little bit extra equipment. Alright. First intro mission over. It will be when we trade it in to Mr. L for our paycheck. Cool. So we're going to get a little bit of the explanation why the playing cards are even important and what's happening just in a second. Because Mr. L is not a nobody. He actually is kind of your typical billionaire with a plan. Here we catch an airplane that takes us to L. Can you fly an aeroplane? Because I could probably figure this out. But... Let's hope the contact we're meeting knows how. Good. We got a refill of our special abilities, which is helpful. Masks from Paris are here too? Impossible. 
There's no way they got here before we did. This guy is guarding, indicating with a yellow eye over his head. Enemies on guard won't move from their post, but they call their buddies over to investigate on their behalf. They are also more alert, quicker, and catch infiltrating agents, even sneaks, uh, even those who sneak up from behind. That's a bit of a problem, which means we need to avoid that absolute disaster. Good, we got ourselves a little bit of a option here. I love explosives. But how can we explode them is the question. Keep up. Hmm. Well, I think we might need to aggressively move in. Does Latif have anything in order to explode? To explode that. I think the said answer is no, which means we need to rely on Ingrid. Sleep well. Right this way. Can you please stop grouping up? I need Latif by himself. And we're going to get this guy. Never mind, I wanted to... I wanted to be a smarty pants and move all the way up to him. Didn't work out. But we dealt a lot of damage. That on the other hand worked out very well. Killer instinct into moving into full cover. Oh no. I'm still used to War Tales where one uh, is your movement. But one here is your ultimate. That is very unfortunate. Moving up, we got um, evasion. Missed that 90% shot. Not good. Hit him. And we're giving ourselves evasion as well. In a perfect world, this guy attacks Ingrid, and this guy attacks Latif, and we have maximized our uh, chances for evasion. But of course, it's not a perfect world. Moves up. Now, by the way, we can explode um, everything, which is stupid. We should have been able to do that beforehand. Just potentially didn't know how to uh, how to do it I know that you can break um, concealment but at the end it worked out very well Who are these goons? secret police communists anarchists none of those seem to fit this is something else all 
Okay, so let's see. Come on, come on. We still don't have any usable item. Um, every single character can carry up to one usable item, but we do not have that yet. But I think we're now meeting our third crew member. Y'all got the package? That depends. Are you the pilot? Me? No. I'm the guy who's gonna get you in one piece. Very good. Eddie. Love it. Yo, Ed, what is going on? Ed does have uh, the ability to throw shock mines. Uh, which will kill enemies and uh, it also attracts nearby enemies and it can even uh, begin uh, to in ignite oil. Good, here are useful items. Bandages, I think Ingrid is going to take those, thank you. Because she's most likely to need them. Uh, to be fair. Eddie Sawyer. Pleased to meet you. They call me the gentleman Jim. Sure thing. Your turn, sister. Just Ingrid will do. Let's keep moving. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. We don't want to be spotted out. You guys are waiting here. Eddie. And Ingrid, no, Ingrid, please. What are you doing? Good, Latif hopefully can take out that guy. Here we go. Well, the answer is he can not. Good. Could have uh, played that cleaner, but maybe it was uh, for the best because we saved our abilities. Hold on. You got any idea who these gas masks are, Sawyer? Seems like there's a new militia every week these days. A lot of Joes came back from the war unfit for anything but killing. Good. Ing Ingrid, please stay there. Whilst Latif this time is hopefully figuring out how to get one of these guys. Thank you. Alright, Latif continues. Let's get, Let's get everybody here. And look at that. That's uh, a perfect opportunity for us to use Eddie's shock grenades. This always works. Except when it don't. Nice. <laughs> they are shocking themselves by just walking through the water. Just gotta get that spotlight and damn the consequences. Well, we alert alerted one of uh, the enemies and they're almost dead so that was clean eddie's uh, shock grenades are super good good 
I still need to get used uh, to the way that the game works. I am, I have internalized uh, the controls of War Tales, and unfortunately, this game works very, very different. Good. How about everybody is hiding, please? Rendezvous with the pilot. If There's my memory there. serves me well, now where'd that, damn pilot get to? that is uh, the first time that we're seeing one of the quote-unquote chosen of this game. Don't wander. Still nothing, Lady Castro. Maybe you got the location wrong. There you go. That's her. Skyans, or the Chosen, if you use XCOM 2 methodology, is a deadly as adversary. When Skyans like her are on the field, there is no shame in running to live and fight another day. The escape route is the aeroplane. So she indeed is quite strong. Good, we're continuing to move over. How about... Let's move. How about... Now, nah, I think Ingrid would be the better choice. Ah, uh, there is the Skyan. Okay, gotta gotta be a bit careful. Don't want to immediately trigger her. If possible, let's use all of our abilities that we can before we're triggering her. Uh, come on, pal. Don't give me the silent treatment. Let's work something out. That's the pilot. Come on, go check it out. You know you wanna. Unfortunately, I did not throw it all the way onto the water. Much to my disappointment, that means these guys are not dead yet. Well, never mind. That was one of the failed attempts to get to them. But, okay. We tried. So, it's our turn first. And I think it's a perfect opportunity to... Get their back line. Very nice. Good job. Um, how about... We don't have the same ability with Eddie here. He can't just move in and get evasion, unfortunately. That's one hit. That's a reset. And we are having evasion on us. Very good. Eddie moves a little bit further forward. And if someone comes from this side, I think we can overwatch. There we go. There is Kyan uh, moves in. And triggers our evasion, followed by some real damage that we're taking. Enough! My sword is first. Mm. 
All right, we're moving up. Got evasion here. Come on, mm. it's better than this. That one's still up. It's better luck with some. And I didn't even have to steal it. <laughs> uh, dealing damage to all areas in a cone of AO, uh, AOE damage. Yeah, that's generally good, but not right now. Eddie moves up. Double misses. The half cover stands very, very firm. We're going to hit him. Unfortunately, we can't get him uh, completely down, which it means we're having evasion. Both of our characters on the right hand side do have evasion. Correction. Ingrid does not have evasion anymore. Let's use our decoy for now. And we're overwatching in that direction. Ingrid on the other side. We'll get this guy down. One hit. Two hits, gets killer instinct and evasion. How are yeah, evasion. Eddie moves up, takes the other side. And I think nicely overwatches. Skyne is retreating, which is good. Um, I knew that that would happen. Which is why I even fought her. But I think we could have maybe even taken her. Y'all may want to start running. Fantastic hit. I like it. Moving up. Ingrid moves in and we're knocking this guy down. There we go. Don't wander. The thief takes bandages and I think that's pretty much it. You got to do. Just get me to my bird in one piece. Good. If my memory serves me well, we still had another usable item that we could get. Yep, there we go. A third set of bandages. And believe me, with my aggressive playstyle, that's not always warranted. Hang back. This is fine. Having enough bandages makes a lot of a difference. Good. That is the intro mission. We find out what kind of man faces well for a blank deck of flame drops. Wouldn't mind knowing who the hell we were fighting back in Marseille. Never seen troops like that before. Let's see what this Mr. L has to say for himself. Good, Mr. L will give us the rundown of what's actually happening. And then we're going to understand the characters a little bit more because we finally can uh, equip some of them and start 
actually developing them. A lovely little Mediterranean island you have here, Mr. F. I assume you are Mr. F? I have that dubious privilege. Welcome, Mr. Lejeune, Ms. Erickson, Mr. Sawyer. Do you have the undrawn hand? We have a package for you. What's inside, we couldn't say, of course. Ah, of course. Regardless, that deck of cards is key to your next job for me. Slow down, pal. Who says we're interested in a next job? The last one burned your courier, and those two saw the body. Then you three may divvy his pay among yourselves, and I'll sweeten the pot for this next one. Fifty percent. You sound desperate. Okay, Mr. L, I'll humor you. What do you want us to do? In a word, sabotage. I'm in a race, you see. A race to find an ancient ruin, a tower. You may know it under one of its other names. The Axis Mundi, the World Tree, the Tower of Babel. Oh, you're an archaeologist then. That's disappointing. <laughs> I am no archaeologist, Monsieur Lejeune. And my rivals in this race are even less so. I want to preserve the tower. My enemies want to ransack it. It cannot be allowed to fall into their hands. But it can fall into yours, huh? And the gal with the sword. She's one of these rivals? Zoran and the Castro. Yes. She and two others. A nobleman and an industrial tycoon. Each is the scion of their own <laughs> noble house. Collectively, they call themselves the Banished Court. Science of the Banished Court. Mm-hmm. And how close are they to finding the tower? They've already found it. You said you were in a race. I was. And I lost. But I'm not out of the fight yet. My enemies have yet to enter the tower. It is a dangerous place, and their preparations are incomplete. I want you three to sabotage their efforts until I can find the tower myself. Sabotage, huh? You have a target in mind? My sources have identified an outpost belonging to another of the court's three leaders, the tycoon Trace Marteau. Marteau. Isn't that the famous American industrialist? The one who's always in the papers? The very same. I want you to infiltrate his outpost, sabotage a machine you'll find at the center, and return to me. Sabotage requires a subtle hand. You'll need me. In the spirit of charity, I accept. You'll need me too. But if the other two scions are anything like the Castro, I ain't risking my neck for free. Mr. Sawyer is right. Double our fee, Mr. L, and we'll get to work. Double it is. And please, call me Locke. Alright, so, we don't know what is happening yet, but there seems to be a mysterious tower. These are portable radios. They'll allow you to communicate in the field, as if you were standing side by side. That's the tiniest radio I've ever seen. In the war, they were big as rucksacks and heavy as sin. The modern world is one of strange and rapid change. I'll take any advantage it provides. So, you finally have your cards back. Was it worth it? Without a question. The undrawn hand is no ordinary deck of cards. Oh, yeah? You going to do a rating? See your future? Can you see my future? Centuries of study. And we've only scratched the surface of the card's potential. But we know this. The undrawn hand doesn't predict the future. It changes it. Can it give me a future where I have a secret island of my own and don't have to work for you anymore? The cards prefer those who tempt fate. Perhaps if you keep sticking your neck out in the field, like you did in Marseille. <sighs> Forget about it. I almost got my head sliced off on that last job. I'll keep flying your gang of crooks around, but I'm not getting off the plane anymore. Not for anything. Not to worry. My agents will handle the field work from now on. Glad we see eye to eye. Good night, boss. Hope somewhere in those cards of yours is a winning hand. There is, Captain. 
there has to be. Wow. What the, with desperation. Long lost tower, huh? There must be something very valuable inside. I wonder why Locke thinks he's the one who should have it. You sure ask a lot of questions, kid. It's part of my job. Besides, I've seen my share of archaeological expeditions. Most of the time, everyone goes home empty-handed. Sometimes, you only wish they did. Mr. Locke hasn't asked us to break out the pickaxes. He just wants us to smash up some machinery. That's another thing. Trace Marteau is in a secret alliance with that Nick Applewood. How's that for an odd couple? He's working on flying cars and she's running around with antique swords. How did they meet? I wonder that too. It keeps me up at night. I'm trying to count the money Locke paid me, but I keep losing count because I can't stop wondering. Mr. Sawyer, I'd be happy to count your money for you. Just say the word. Gentlemen, please. It's simple. Two sets of wealthy eccentrics have decided to indulge in an archaeological competition. Our Mr. Locke and this banished corpse. And if we play our cards right, we'll come away rich enough to cultivate eccentric hobbies of our own. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be preparing for our next mission. Okay, check the world map for a little bit more info. The next mission, this is the world map. Uh, Locke uses to plan his secret war against the signs of the banished court. Use it to track down the court progress. A pin in the map represents a sabotage job. So, uh, basically what we're uh, going to get out of that is one intelligence, um, a six SP, which are agent uh, points and 75 resources which you can trade in for different equipment if we look at uh, the agents um, each of them does have their own skill tree so let's take a look at what each of them does because now it becomes a bit more clearer so each agent has a passive ability and an ultimate and a couple of normal abilities ingrid here who's kind of the main frontline character so to speak uh, has six speed uh, deals 35 uh, physical damage, does have a, p a passive ability that upon killing an enemy she gets one ability point, can activate two times around. So that's a little bit like Reaper, but she doesn't deal a lot of damage, that's uh, the problem. Onslaught, signature ability, deals damage and deflects knockdown, which means enemies are losing their next turn. So that's her. We got Latif. Uh, who has the nice passive ability of dodge. Whenever he moves, he gets um, evasion, um, and then he can shoot afterwards. So pretty straightforward. Uh, his ultimate signature ability is the decoy, 120 hit points. Um, he himself becomes inv invisible, moves forward to another location. Decoy re remains there for two rounds and absorbs shots. And then we got Eddie. Good old Eddie um, gains one ammo for every crit that he does. Unfortunately, his crit chance at the moment isn't that great. Um, and his signature ability you've already seen is the barrage. So we now do have these little uh, points that can help us to upgrade. And really how it is going to work is you do have one a point uh, for the first level and then it's two points on the respective next level. So for Ingrid, for instance, melee buff ability, um, stick and move is her first ability that she needs in order to even enter uh, the uh, tree, which is a melee uh, debuff ability, devastating hit that blinds the enemy and grants Ingrid a free move action. So well, that's a good one if you want to kind of get back out of um, melee. Um, also, she gets more uh, uh, more hit points and a little bit of a damage boost. Since we are going to use her, um, I actually will invest in Ingrid a bit. Um, so uh, we do have six points, which means I will skill... Um, one basic ability and uh, one advanced ability for Ingrid and uh, for Latif, uh, who are the two that I'm going to invest in for now. Um, and we're going to see if we're keeping Eddie or not. Um, you know what? Maybe we're doing Ingrid and Eddie. Who knows? Um, so Ingrid now has three options. So basically, uh, one uh, here is melee overwatch, which is really bladestorm. Passive ability, performs an attack to any adjacent enemy, can only activate once per turn though. Um, extra hit points, more damage. Uh, the other one is uh, pushback kick, pushes the target back, causing knockdown. 
um, if it flies into an object, uh, crowd control, which isn't bad. And Horde Pursuit, passive ability upon using stick and move, which is her uh, new ability. Ingrid also gains two speed. So if you're going uh, uh, to go further down, uh, that, uh, let's, let's evaluate how I typically approach um, tactical games. Crowd control is good because enemies don't get, uh, get action. And other than that, um, if you can improve your own action economy, that's always a good uh, sign as well. So um, her ultimate is Killer Instinct, passive ability upon killing an enemy, in Ingrid gets one AP, can activate any number of times per round. So of course, that's what we want to do. Here, uh, we can activate it three times per round. So that's really a strong ability and gives her a decisive edge however it also costs a lot of um, a lot of uh, points um, her signature ability would be upgraded in the process deals damage um, and she has two charges of onslaught which isn't bad and then there is kind of her perfect weapon upgrade increases damage incre uh, significantly increases uh, crit chance so that's not bad either here she has a speed buff, um, which is a flat uh, buff plus hit points plus damage, so that's not uh, bad. Here she does have push kick number two, uh, which also shreds 10 armor. I'm not sure if I would immediately go into that. Um, uh, further pushback is good, but uh, yeah, you do have limited points, right? And here melee overwatch can go into, can trigger twice around, which is great. And here... Um, Passive ability Ingrid's crit reduces her cooldowns by one, which is nice because then uh, you would be able to use uh, a lot of abilities more often. So that's not bad either. But I think we are going to focus on really that killer instinct because that is her main ability. So we're going to go into push kick, uh, which uh, is also a crowd control ability. Now let's think about what the other character is that we want to play. So upon review, I mean, both of the others do have fine abilities, uh, don't get me wrong, but I think I want to focus more on Ingrid with her uh, skill tree. What I will do is, well, since it only costs one point, it would be stupid not to get at least the basic ability. So for uh, Latif, the basic ability is Distract which is a debuff. Uh, Latif inflicts blinded to all enemies in an area, which is an AOE debuff. Uh, and he gets a couple more hit points plus a little bit more damage. So that's not bad as a starter. For Eddie, uh, the absolute basic ability is light him up. Ranged ability attacks up to four targets as long as uh, the ammo permits it. His targets are flushed out of their current location and will lose their cover. All targets also gain marked. So that's not bad either. I think both of the abilities for one point are a steal, uh, but with two points we can uh, get Ingrid another ability if we want. And besides kind of that main track, I now want to uh, see what we are going to take. Passive ability, uh, Ingrid gains a speed upgrade, but that is an option into uh, more hit points and damage uh, and stick and move uh, level two, or we're going into that blade storm, which I think is an interesting concept. So uh, blade storm twice around, uh, that uh, is not too bad. So uh, apparently we only had six points but we have spent five of them instead of four. Oh no wait one three four five okay never mind um, math is hard when you are on stream anyways we have no undrawn hand cards yet and the only thing that we can really uh, that we can really equip is the absolute basic equipment no weapon mods nothing so we're just having really the absolute basic stuff and this one will be the trial run which is going to happen in the next episode uh, we have already um, come to the end of uh, the first episode i hope you like lamplighters league so far it's a fun game so let's take a look what the next mission is going to entail certainly 
um, our team will face quite a tough opposition. So join me the next time when we continue Lamp Lighters League. In the meantime, as always, it helps a ton if you would click that like button and leave a comment. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, but it will recommend the video to so many more people on YouTube. Thank you so much, have a good one and see you soon. Bye bye.